going to get started with the next session. Welcome to all the new people in the room. Um, I'm Danielle, and I'm introducing the sessions in this awesome uh, session about cities and datas. And next we have Gaba Rod Rodriguez, and she's an activist and a hacker who works at the Coral Project and does consulting around data. Um, she loves the intersection between media and technology. She co-founded a nonprofit called DATA, which works with open data and transparency in South America. She grew up in Uruguay, and now she hangs out with me in Portland. So, Gaba. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Everybody see me? Um, okay. So, today I want to talk a little about um, a project that I was involved uh, until last year. Um, I'm, I'm a software engineer, but I also work with data, um, with different nonprofits, uh, on different governments. So, I help uh, Mexico City to um, implement a standard on open data. So I want to talk a little about my experience there and also about uh, what is the standard. Let me move it because Ria, really I need to move it. It's better this way. Yeah, it's still there, okay. So first, what are public contracts? So um, I'm, I'm something else, two disclaimers. <laughs> One, um, English is my second language, so I'm sorry if there's any mistakes. Um, and second, I'm sorry there are no cats. <laughs> so, yeah. What are public contracts? Um, so an agreement to perform a particular task to benefit the community at large that is financed by government funds. Do, those could be from like building of bridges or airports like in Mexico City to contracts of cleaning services in the different um, organisms. So, those are public contracts. Uh, why is important to open them? Why, why we need, this is very, it's quite related with the, the talk before me, uh, seems to me because it's one of the reasons why we need to open data, no? Um, in, the, in the case of public contracts, is uh, most of the corruption that we have in our governments is through public contracts. So having open data makes them transparent for, transparent for everybody to use them, to, to um, to cross them with other data, to see where there could be problems, allow to track the tenders and awards, uh, allows the government to, to monitor implementation of how the pub public contract delivers services, deliver ve delivery better value for money for the government. And that is a very important reason on why to open data around public contracts. It's not just for like the um, companies that are applying to these um, contracts, the, to benefit uh, from where the contracts are, but also for the government to be able to know uh, what they are spending money on. No? That usually, as um, she was saying before, is usually different dependencies do not know what uh, the other data and other dependencies are about, and uh, so um, there's not much information inside the government. So opening the data makes like the civil society to work on that and help the government to um, to deliver better value. And of course, prevent fraud and corruption. That's the, the first one to reason to open uh, public contracts. So, um, in the, around 2013, 2014, um, there was a lot of interest on uh, pushing for, uh, different governments to opening contracts. So there was a partnership uh, that was born that's called the Open Contracting Partnership. Uh, there were like policy experts, programmers, leaders, campaigners that try to um, see how that could happen, how they can build a standard on open data that is not so only about um, the format and meaning of the data, but also about how to publish data, how a guide on from the beginning, because it's not as simple as saying, okay, open the data. Sometimes the governments don't have data on, on the contracts or it, everything's in paper, like in, in the case of Mexico. Um, so these uh, partnerships try to advocate uh, around opening public contracts. Um, they open public contracts through disclosure, data and engagement, so that the huge sums of money involved are spent honestly, fairly, and effectively. So the contracting process. So um, this is in general, no? Around the world, <laughs> for all the governments. We have different phases on, um, 
when, when con uh, contracting, no? We begin in the planning, so when the, the um, different organizations try to think, okay, this is what we need, this is uh, the budget we have, these are the project plans, this is a market study, so there's a lot of documents and information related with where the, the government wants to uh, spend the money in. After they have an, a, a specific plan, they go in and uh, post a tender, so they have notices to call the companies to say, okay, um, these are the tenders that you can apply to. So in that case, there's um, documents around tender notices, specifications, inquiries. And then there's different processes, depending mostly on the governments, um, on how they award that uh, contract. No? And in that case, include the details of award, the bidder information, bid evaluation. And then when there's a decision made about who uh, gets the contract, then you have to sign the contract. <laughs> um, there's the sign contracts, amendments, uh, if there's some changes, final details, and also sometimes information about contracts that are like, um, um, that do not expire, that, um, that renew automatically. There's many, many ways that the contract could continue. No? And then the implementation, that is the part that mostly the governments don't have so much, but it's uh, quite important, that is about monitoring how that contract went through, no? all the milestones, the payments, um, and the termination info if that's appropriate. No? So from there, from that process, um, we build uh, what we call open contracting data standard. Um, that data standards, as you may or may not know, are the rules by which data is described and recorded. It could be standard, standardized the format, as well as the meaning. You're saying, okay, you have to publish um, See uh, JSONs or an API or something like that, and this is the information you need for each phase. And the specific open contracted data standard is a global non proprietary standard structured to reflect the complete contracting cycle. So it tells you how to publish data in each phase, no? um, and how periodically to uh, publish the data. The approach um, that uh, we had around the standard is to publish early, early and iter iterate. Um, so for example, most of the government can publish documents. That, that would be the first part, no? Not publish structured data, but just the documents and the contracts and no. Um, that would be something, the first step to start publishing data uh, around open contracting. Then uh, the other approach is try to have them to, um, to publish in a, in, JSON, in a JSON structure and publish data for each step of the contracting process, create a summary record for an overall contracting process, uh, reuse objects, so for Mexico we try to get the list of organizations, tender information, um, line items, milestones, different kind of information around contractings in general. No? Um, then recommend data and document at basic, intermediate, and advanced level. Advanced level. So when we, are trying to when we try to approach about opening contracts, we say, okay, we, you don't need to just do the five stars of open data. <laughs> um, that we, I can talk later about that. Um, but uh, you just publish the basic information, whatever you have. And then from there, well, now try to add this. Now un until we have all the levels of what people may, may use or may need. Um, and some, uh, the other approach is guidance on improving data collection and data quality, no? And a growing community of users and range of open source tools. Something very interesting about um, the open contracted data standard, or for me at least, <laughs> quite interesting, is that it's a community effort. So, and it's, it's uh, work in the open. So the, the, the standard is being developed in GitHub, and you as uh, whoever can um, go and, uh, and see the different versions and see what are the possible extensions and po possible features for the next version. And this is all feed from the, the specific implementations. Implementations in Mexico, in Ukraine, in Paraguay, in different places are feeding back to the standard on which things they need or, no, or not need or what, what things could be good or bad about like uh, how it's been implemented. No? 
So first, I'm going to go through different phases of how we uh, go about implementing in Mexico, how it's being implemented in general around the world. No? First, we do an assessment, and we, talk, we, we ask these questions. No? We, what data systems do we have that hold contracting data? That is the harder part about, the go uh, about implementing this, because sometimes uh, the information for different phases are like all over the place in different systems. So we need to find a way to extract all that data from different places and, um, and publish it. For the case of Mexico, uh, the Mexico City, you know, because the federal level is more complicated, and there's also an effort about uh, implementing it at the federal level. For Mexico City, um, there was a we found a specific organism, the Secretaría de Finanzas, that hold most of the information about contracts. So, and we, they have the capacity, the technical capacity to implement the standard, so we work with them. Um, and from there, like, we changed their system to be able to publish data uh, the way we were recommending. No? The second question would be, which data system holds data on each stage of a contracting process? No? That's, um, yeah. Like, for example, for the case of implementation, it could be harder, it could be in some other systems. Do you hold uh, something else? The other question is, do you hold consistent identifiers for each contracting process and for the parties to tender and contracts? So this is an effort that tries to bring public contracts around the world. So what we try to do is have a specific uh, unique identifier per contract uh, that is global. <laughs> so for Mexico, there has, um, the identifier is we give like a code and with that code, they made the identifier, and that says all the contracts that start with that code are from Mexico. So people could, for example, like uh, journalists or, or uh, civil society could um, uh, interact with contracts from different uh, places, and they could understand also how that uh, works. No? And then the last question is, what technical resources do you have available to help in the implementation of open contracting? That is quite important too, and in the case of Mexico City, yeah, we, have, we had a team that was quite willing to, to help with implementation. So here is like, continue with assessments. We, we write which systems they have for each of the stages, planning, tender, work, contra implementation. We ask, is the data a structure? For the case of Mexico City, they had a law, a transparency law, that says, for, for whole Mexico, no? that says every three months they need to publish a contract. But what they were doing is that somebody was going through all the papers and adding to a spreadsheet manually <laughs> every three months all the contracts, and they were published that. <laughs> so there was some information, but it was not coming automatically from their systems. Um, so yeah, then we ask if the do documents are published. That would be the first recommendation when starting implementing. Um, because that's, that's the validation of what we are seeing in the data, no? So the, that verifies that the data that they are publishing is correct. Then the revision history, we try to publish like, like um, photos of each part. Uh, you, you have the whole process, so we say, okay, p first publish a photo of the planning. Then when it goes to tender, a photo, the, so you have like a um, control of different um, history revisions of the process, and with that you can have a better idea how the, the contract uh, move on. No? And then access restrictions, because many governments, when they publish data, they require a login, for example, or an account. So, so one recommendation is that when they publish data, it should have no restrictions on access. No? Um, so the Open Contracted Data Standard provides a structured data model for capturing information about each of the stages of the contracting process. And uh, we have a, a JSON schema which describes all the field names, field definitions, and structures for the data. No? Um, and then when we uh, talk about compliance, we talk about assessing against that, that schema. No? So um, we talk about the JSON schema and also the guide on how to implement, uh, implement and publish the standard. So this would be, um, okay, so we had an assessment. Now the next step would be uh, to map data. So for Mexico, we did that. We see, okay, this is the recommendation of the standard, no? We have this, this JSON file with all the different um, stages. So the first one, we fill planning and we send that information, we publish that information. The, the second release, we, send, we fill tender and we publish that information. And that's how you start filling it up. No, that shows on file. And what we do to be able to implement this or to be change systems or add a new system 
that they have about publishing data, is that we map, we say, okay, the planning is in this system, it's this data, that's where it's coming from, that's how you call it in Mexico, no? Um, and try to see rules about what's happening around planning or, um, so there's a lot of things around mapping that, that is the most um, hard part of this process. <laughs> Um, then we publish data in machine-readable releases and records. That will be the shapes and files with a unique identifier. Um, and then we publish using publication pattern, patterns. This is what I was talking about, the five stars. So um, there's a kind of um, quality <laughs> score no? about how governments publish data. So first would be the first star, we give, it, if we give the first star, one star, I'm sorry, if, we, if they upload basic contracting data and documents to the web, it's just do that. So Mexico City already had one star because they were doing that. They were publishing the documents and they were publishing manually. Um, two stars if they provide machine readable data, three stars if they use the standard, four stars if they provide an API access to the data so people can use uh, that API to, to get data. And the uh, five stars if like they provide other kind of data sets that we can cross uh, open uh, the contracts with. No? Um, then the next step after they publish and, um, and define all these, these stars is to check the validation of the data. We have, if you go to GitHub uh, to the open contracting data standard repo um, organizations, we have a validator that does a technical check on the way the data is structured and format. Then we look at the conformance, um, so it, checking if like what they are publishing and what the concept of each terms um, is used correctly as, as, the, uh, as the standard says. No? Then how complete is um, the information they are sending um, and then uh, if, if the data fit for purpose or not. No? That's some, this is something that seems to me very interesting about this specific standard on the data that is like community build. Um, this is, uh, yes, is supported by the Open Contracting Partnership, but it's also like, um, it's also built by, by all the different uh, civil society organizations and government around the world that are trying to implement open contracts. So you go there and you can like in the standard repo look at all the issues and all the uh, questions uh, that comes from different implementations on how, wh which things we need to change and with how we can extend this, uh, this standard for, to make sense in the different places, no? And th this is uh, the extension. So the extension is, for example, I have this standard in the version one, no? And like, um, Mexico says, okay, we need this, for example, this, this thing about contract. There are some contracts that never expire and they, they renew automatically. Okay, that was not in the standard in the version 1.0. Okay, we need an extension. So they publish it the way they want, they propose extension, and then in the next release of the standard, we see if that extension goes into the core or not. So, so that's, that's how it works, the building. Um, history of releasing data in Mexico City. Uh, so first, yeah, this is this will be the standard. No? <laughs> now we go back to Mexico. Um, so we validate, uh, they validated the standard in 2014, and was the first city to release its full contracting data from planning to implementation. So now they they are releasing um, data already in the standard. There was uh, a big thing about this is politics that was very hard. Um, so there's a lot of politics about pushing it forward to implement the standard. Um, yeah, that happens in all the governments, I guess. Uh, starting a small department with technical capacity and willing to change processes, that's something I already talked about. Uh, they have the technical capacity to implement the standard. Also, they have the willing to change, because it's not just to add a system and say, okay, publish data, but also uh, the cultural process, no? Um, on how they capture the data, no? which new things they need to capture. So there was a lot of tr internal training about how to, uh, things need to change for the people that are capturing data and that they're sending it from paper to, to the system. No? And we try to involve and we recommend to involve the civil society um, from the beginning. So we started doing, because one, one important thing about open data is we need to use why, uh, we need to see why we need that data. What are the cases? In the case of uh, Mexico, people were really concerned about the metro change, uh, concerned about airport um, 
there were many things that people in Mexico were concerned about, so it was important to talk with them to see what, which kind of data they needed, no? Um, and then they modified existing systems to capture needed data. This is the website that um, uh, some people built uh, from um, the, uh, the data that the city published. Uh, and this has an API and also has visualizations of how the different contracts um, happen no? and different transactions. So, and up there in the URL, you can see the identifier, the unique global identifier from Outman Contracting for that specific contract. No? Challenge, contracting process identifiers is sometimes, is, uh, this is something I already, I think I talked a little about uh, already. Um, the identifiers sometimes are not so easy because some, sometimes uh, the systems have information here and there, so it's hard to, to match to say, and create a unique identifier. Useful data, you start with um, this, or, uh, this organization that has the technical capacity and willing to change, but it's, sometimes it's data only about um, not very useful. <laughs> so that, um, that was one challenge when starting. Involving civil society all the way is hard because uh, most in Mexico and I guess some in other places, it's hard for the civil society to talk with the government. Pushing to open critical organism process and culture on capturing data, something I already talked about. Other places implementing OCDS, very interesting if you, are, if you really want to read about uh, open uh, contracting, is the case of Ukraine. Um, there was a civil society group that started pushing um, to open contracts and they built this, uh, this system called ProSoro, that is free software, and the government uh, implement ProSoro uh, in their own um, organism. So they, now they have this website that publish contracts now. And other interesting places, Paraguay too, that they, this is a visualization that they did. Uh, for example, there they see what are the providers. Yes, they are the providers um, that uh, have more, get more contracts from the government. Um, so it's interesting by time. So if you go to their website, you can see um, all the interesting visualizations. That's it. And those are the links for if you're interested about this. Thank you.